make a fresh dog. It was humorous, it was educational, and I really enjoyed it. It was really entertaining and had a lot of information. It was, it was, yeah, it was really cute too, seeing the, the dogs. It was, so, it was really cool. It was pretty good, um, a lot of information. It was fascinating. It was amazing. I learned more in an hour and a half than I think I did in the last 20 years. I loved all the facts and yeah, all the pictures of the dogs and stuff, yeah. My favorite part was actually meeting the guide dog that inspired this entire series. Yeah, the German Shepherd is really cute. Hi, my name's Colin. This is my guide dog, Pal. We live in Edmonton and I'm visually impaired. playing. Oh, I liked seeing all the dogs play and I, I loved all the puppies and the dogs. It was adorable. Yeah. I love puppies. Seeing how they kind of get trained and that. Emily is the one that tends to be the most engaged in the training part of it, and uh, she'll often grab his leash and and uh, start, you know, giving the commands. Yeah, good boy. Down. Yeah, good boy. I train Dexter. Um, there's many. Down. Come to your bed. Um, step. I learned a lot, almost as much as I learned in school. So we often um, get asked if, if our puppies do fail, and the answer is yes. Um, we uh, generally, for most guide dog schools, it is a 50% success rate. Knowing that 50% of dogs pass the, the training, that was interesting to hear. I like the part when they were talking about how if a dog doesn't quite make it to being a guide dog or a service dog, then they can be adopted out. Some of our uh, dogs obviously don't make it into the guide dog program or the ambassador or the buddy dog program. Um, so those dogs would then be uh, offered back to their puppy raisers. Uh, and if the puppy raiser can't have them back uh, for whatever reason, then they would um, go uh, out to one of the people that we have on our adoptions list. Whatever their problem may be that causes them to fail the program, they're still very highly trained, uh, socially adept dogs. Um, and so there's generally a pretty long waiting list of people who want these dogs who either fail or retire as, as pets. And, um, because they make an amazing pet. It was very educational because I learned something today. I learned the difference between a guide dog and a service dog. And I think that was really valuable. A service dog is a general overlapping term for really any dog that is task trained. Nation helps me um, because I have epilepsy. I started having epilepsy from being struck by lightning. He barked, should I have a seizure to uh, get people to help me? So when I start to feel pain in my legs or when my heart rate gets high, She's like, yeah. she's like, but you're fine. <laughs> Bailey, we're trying to demonstrate something and you're not being a very good helper. <laughs> she is worth it. She is 100% worth every penny we spent. So all guide dogs are service dogs because they're trained to 
assist people with a disability. Uh, not all service dogs are guard dogs, but they should be given equal protections. Just putting that out there. If I'm wearing sunglasses, <laughs> they figure I can't see. So they think that he is guiding me. I think sometimes people tend to forget that there's dogs that do other jobs other than just guiding people. It, it was very entertaining. I laughed. <laughs> sometimes I didn't hear other people laughing, but I was laughing um, in parts where one of the dog handlers were taking her dog out uh, in the wintertime. She had booties on him, and it was so funny how he was walking. Like, you know, he didn't like the booties. Also, when Colin said to the, uh, during the band playing, um, he was playing in a band and he said, am I too early? I don't know, I can't see you. And that was funny. So currently I am a working musician in Edmonton. Uh, I'm in several different bands and I play uh, guitar and sing. Um, around Edmonton and various different venues across the city and around uh, Alberta. Hey, can we not do a cheers with us or is it too early yet? Do it again, I didn't see you guys. Cheers! Welcome to the bayou We're down in a big old swamp Louisiana voodoo The part how dogs work in like a, re a restaurant They just go under the table and stuff That's pretty cool Okay, so when me and Pal go into a restaurant There is certain oh, etiquette yeah. that Pal and I both have to follow in order for him to maintain his good behavior in a restaurant and to uh, basically disappear under a table. So this is basically what we have to do. It's a bit of a dance. We come up to a table like this. He shows me the table or the seat. And then we do this. Come on. Come. Turn. And down. Good boy. So now he's nicely tucked underneath the table, under my feet. Nobody can see him down there and he's very safe and secure and hanging out, ready to have a big sleep on my foot while I have something to eat. He's usually pretty good at finding a spot underneath the table. Usually a booth is best. Uh, it gives a little bit more room for the dog and uh, it keeps him safe and secure and out of the way and allows him to disappear a little bit in the restaurant uh, so that he's, he's not as noticeable. Nobody wants their dog jumping up on someone's table to grab their steak because the dog's had steak before and he knows that it tastes good. Also, human food is not healthy for, for a dog. Well, I just really like seeing all like the dogs and how like they help them. So having a guide dog um, was a drastic change in the way I was able to navigate my environment. There's still, you know, obviously some focus and concentration and, and alertness that you have to have while working a dog, but because the dog is trained to guide the blind person around, it's not autopilot, but it takes a lot of the stress out of um, traveling. I am so much more confident with her in my life. She improves my independence, my confidence, my ability to get out there and you know, do things that I normally wouldn't be comfortable doing, I can do now with her. So it's been a total life changer. I feel like I can navigate my world at a normal pace a normal speed of walking. He has made my life so much easier and I feel like I'm more independent than I was before. I feel safer. I have been able to go places and do things because I've had a dog. I, I am a marathoner because I taught Jenny how to run with me. I absolutely believe that. I would never have run my first marathon if Jenny and I had not run our first two halves. It never, ever would have happened. And you take for granted uh, a lot of what uh, these people and these canines go through. 
I have no patience for um, people who reach out and pet without permission. Um, I have had people get very upset when I have told them not to pet the dog and they do it anyway. Sometimes random strangers um, want to give my dog a treat uh, when we're out working. Just the other day I had a guy trying to give my guy here some a cheeseburger. Like, I, I it's something you just don't do. My first um, access issue was a brutally cold day in uh, January and the driver um, basically said that he was not going to take me and he just rolled up his window and he drove away. That particular driver drove for Uber. All right, Uber's on the way. On the way. Hey, hey, Uber, Uber. Yeah, but uh, I didn't know about the dog, so I, I, I'm sorry. You, gotta, uh, you have to take the dog with you, man. It's not a... Uh, no, I, I'm not taking the dog, sorry. I really enjoyed it, and I, I want to see all the other episodes. For those that aren't in the know, get in the know. Um, read a book. Uh, watch documentaries. Um, because it, it's fascinating and it is amazing what you'll learn.